Our news recap from yesterday briefed you all on AMD's launch timelines and with AMD's accidental stream of the rehearsal and later stream of the keynote itself, we can now confirm that our information in yesterday's content was correct. AMD ended up revealing some limited information on CPU specs, like we said, but nothing on the full stack just yet. Many of the CPUs have not been unveiled at this time and deeper specs won't be detailed until later. We do have the very top level specifications on some products though, mostly ones we already knew, but we have some prices. Unfortunately, but not unexpectedly, AMD still hasn't revealed the full product line. Yesterday, we told you that the June 10th event, part of AMD's Next Horizon E3 opener, would have the full product lineup, prices, SKUs for GPU and CPU, and deeper specifications on what's going on in the silicon. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair's Iron Claw RGB wireless gaming mouse. The Corsair Iron Claw focuses first on comfort with its palm grip approach and also uses a sub one millisecond wireless connection for the PC. You can toggle between wireless and Bluetooth connectivity, making it easy to control multiple PCs with one mouse, like a streaming PC and a gaming PC. The mouse has 10 programmable buttons, the PMW3391 18,000 DPI sensor, three zone RGB LEDs, and 50 million click lifespan for left and right mouse buttons. Learn more at the link in the description below. So we got some information on the Ryzen CPUs coming up and on Navi, a very small amount of Navi information. For Ryzen, unfortunately, there wasn't a ton of detail. We got some top level specs, top level frequencies and prices, and then any deeper architectural information will wait. There's a June 10th event that AMD was pushing hard during this keynote. It's one that we spoiled uh, or talked about further yesterday in our uh, initial news recap, and that'll have deeper architectural information and hopefully some more information on how the boosting behaves. Because with AMD, when you have base and boost, it doesn't mean a whole ton. What we really want to see is further information on how it behaves under boost and uh, how XFR behaves with the new Ryzen 3000 series. So base and boost, not the whole story, but let's get into it. To recap the timelines that we gave in yesterday's content, July 1st is the pre-order date for Ryzen CPUs. As always, we'd recommend waiting for reviews for pre-ordering products. Uh, so July 1st for that, the X570 motherboards will also be up for pre-order. Navi, probably not included in that July 1st date, but we actually don't know. We just knew about the CPUs yesterday. June 10th for the E3 opener, which will have further information on all the products. And then July 7th for the release date was confirmed by AMD. That's what we said in yesterday's content. Yesterday's content was from AMD but just unofficially, so not a surprise that that was confirmed. Let's get through the CPU specifications. There are a couple of them to talk about, but the 16 core CPU was not announced. We do know that it exists and we know that it will come out, but maybe that's something for the June 10th event. Uh, this is more on what we were saying yesterday where the full product stack won't be revealed today. It wasn't. There's still a lot more out there that wasn't revealed. So. We got just a teaser of Ryzen 3000 and then the, the rest of the CPU is still coming. Let's get through the specs on what we have so far. So Ryzen's 3700X, it's an eight core 16 thread CPU. This one is listed currently from the uh, video at 3.8 gigahertz, 4.6 gigahertz base and boost. The uh, TDP is supposed to be 65 watts. There are some comparisons shown versus previous generation AMD CPUs at 105 watts where the 3700X looks favorable, but there are a couple caveats there we might talk about later. Uh, Cinebench performance was shown. Cinebench isn't really a, a tool we particularly like to use, but AMD loves to use it for their multi-threaded comparisons. Ideally, we see Blender or something like that. That's a real use case. And AMD did end up showing Blender for one of the other comparisons later. But Cinebench showed a plus 15% uplift in the 3700X versus the 2700X, single-threaded. The uh, TDP is supposed to be 65 watts. There are some comparisons shown versus previous generation AMD CPUs at 105 watts, where the 3700X looks favorable. But there are a couple caveats there we might talk about later. Uh, Cinebench performance was shown. Cinebench isn't really a, a tool we particularly like to use, but AMD loves to use it for their multi-threaded comparisons. Ideally, we see Blender or something like that. That's a real use case. And AMD did end up showing Blender for one of the other comparisons later. But Cinebench showed a plus 15% uplift in the 3700X versus the 2700X single-threaded workload. Now, that does not mean that there's a literal 15% increase in, for example, single-threaded or single-thread intensive gaming or other application workloads. So each application will behave a bit differently. Temper your expectations. As always, Cinebench gives us uh, an interesting part of the story, but not all of it. So just make sure your, your expectations are, uh, are not too 
wide reaching with that 15% number because it could change for games and things like that. We do have some gaming numbers, though. Cinebench also showed an 18% to uplift versus the 2700X in multi-threaded workload. So the 3700X versus 2700X was the comparison AMD made the most. And I did show performance uplift there at 105 watts for the previous processor versus 65 watts for the new processor, TDP anyway. And uh, there's, there's a little bit of trickery there because TDP is uh, not necessarily a one-for-one -one power consumption, but also the uh, different things like boost duration will impact how much power is being consumed actively. And we don't know the specs. Like you said yesterday, we don't know the specs on things like boost duration uh, timelines or um, the power levels that AMD is allowing the CPUs to reach with whatever motherboards they were testing on. So a lot of information missing there, but we do have some basics. $330 for that one. The 3800X is supposed to be a $400 processor. That one's uh, a 3.9 gigahertz base, 4.5 gigahertz boost. CPU it is also eight core, 16 thread, and looking at 36 megabytes of total cache for that anyway. We don't know the individual L1, L2, L3, and so forth. So still missing a lot of specifications. Again, as said yesterday, 105 watt TDP for that one. And then the 3900X is the 12 core, 24 thread part. We did not get a 16 core part announcement today. Again, it exists 100%. We can confirm that. It's just we didn't get the announcement from AMD officially. The 3900X will run 3.8 gigahertz base and 4.6 gigahertz boost. So it is not 5 gigahertz. We warned about this several times leading up to the announcement that 5 gigahertz expectations were unrealistic and you would be disappointed if you believed them. Uh, you may be able to overclock towards that number, but do not expect a 5 gigahertz all core out of the box because it's not happening as AMD has shown today. 3.8 and 4.6 though is still at least an uplift over previous generations. As for overclocking, we can't talk too much about it yet because we don't, we don't know, we don't have the chips in hand, but based on AMD's previous two launches, there's typically not a ton of overclocking headroom because AMD already bakes in all the performance that they can. They push it pretty high against the max clocks, uh, but we'll look into that more as the CPUs become available for testing. It's just that the, the five gigahertz all core number is one that we don't want people to get too fixated on. Just wait for the testing before we think about that any further. And then 105 watt for TDP as well, 70 megabytes of total cache. That looks to be three total silicon dyes on the module that uh, Dr. Lisa Sue held up during the presentation. And that one is where we saw blender tests um, versus the 9920X was the comparison drawn. So the 3900X, is priced at $500. And then uh, further information on that, we'll just have to wait for the E3 event on, on anything special for what's going on. Uh, IO will be interesting for that one. Memory latency will be interesting for that one. But memory latency is something AMD spent some time talking about during the presentation. And it's one of the areas that AMD is pushing the hardest for improvement so that it can specifically as named in the presentation, get uplift in gaming performance and memory latency intensive single threaded workloads. So that's something we should be looking at in testing. The uplift demonstrated, there were some gaming benchmarks shown and the uplift demonstrated was a 3800X versus a 2700X. Specifically, we have some charts from AMD on those. So they showed a 34% uplift in CSGO, 30% in League of Legends, 22% PUBG, 21% Overwatch, 15% Dota 2, 11% GTA 5. Dota 2 is interesting because it is actually a, a really, um, it, it just performs significantly better on Intel CPUs. That game uh, specifically is, is much much further ahead in FPS on Intel CPUs on average in our testing. So to see uplift there to the extent of 15% is promising for AMD's improvements this generation versus the last. And that was 3800X for 2700X. We don't have Intel versus AMD gaming performance numbers from this presentation. We did get some production workload performance numbers from it. Well, not really numbers, but comparisons of Blender. And then the there was one more comparison for Navi mixed with Ryzen 3000 versus NVIDIA versus Intel 9000 with a 3 d Mark PCIe uh, bandwidth test. And this one, we do want to warn you that if you watch this text out of context or you don't listen carefully to what Andy said during it, there were some careful words chosen. It is an incredibly misleading demonstration because you have two mismatched system configuration. So you're not linearly comparing head to head GPU, GPU, CPU, CPU. You have two different components, completely different products, pieces of silicon in there uh, versus each other. And the, uh, the bigger point of concern is that it's specifically built for PCIe bandwidth testing. And that doesn't necessarily and will not translate into a one to one 
performance uplift for PCIe Gen 4 versus 3 in gaming. We've done these tests in the past with Gen 3 with Bi-16 versus Bi-8, and you can see the, the limited gains there versus something like a PCIe bandwidth test that's made to hit the PCIe bus. So that is one of the, the points of concern is AMD shows a, uh, you know, they talk about 25 FPS on the AMD system versus 14 FPS on the Intel system. And then where it gets a little bit messy is because you're seeing a 2080 Ti on one and then an RX 5700 on the other where the 5700 had previously been compared to the RTX 2070. So it's clearly meant to be a 2070 competitor, not a 2080 Ti competitor, but because you're seeing the two matched in that test, uh, definitely a lot of people are gonna walk away saying the RX 5700 is as fast or faster than a 2080 Ti. In fact, AMD showed that in that comparison, the PCIe bandwidth uplift was uh, up to 69% performance increase from what they were saying. That may well be true in the PCIe bandwidth test, but please do not walk away from their presentation thinking that an RX 5700 is going to be 70% faster than an RTX 2080 Ti in something like your average gaming workload. You will be extremely disappointed because uh, we're not saying that 5700 won't be good or competitive, but 70%, please don't expect that. That's not happening. Any company would be happy to get 70% uplift over a flagship in one generation. So that's, it's not like that anymore. So there were really, really limited pieces of information given on the RX 5700 and 5000 series for Navi GPUs. There's really not a lot to go off of. We know that RDNA is the new gaming architecture, not 100% clear on how much of it is uh, comprised of GCN versus just completely moving past GCN. And they did use the phrasing, we love GCN, dot, 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 but, which is normally an indication that they're moving on from it. Uh, they, AMD noted that it has increased the number of instructions per clock, which is not particularly surprising. New cache hierarchy, not surprising. No details on what it is. Higher bandwidth, no details on what it is. And AMD also said they want to do more, which is not surprising. 1.5x performance per watt. Not sure what the 1.5x is multiplying, but uh, probably Vega or something like that. And then they also showed an RX 5700 again versus 2070 in Strange Brigade and uh, no, no details on the graphic settings used. So can't really draw a ton of conclusions there. July release date for the RX 5700 and then June 10th, once again, spoiled by Andy during this part of the presentation for more information on the RX series. As for motherboards, Asus said it has 30 motherboards coming out for X570, which is interesting because it shows an investment by the motherboard manufacturers in the new Ryzen products. So uh, first generation Zen, you didn't really see that kind of commitment from the motherboard makers and now they're seeing enough sales volume in Ryzen that the manufacturers of boards are starting to support AMD more directly. Uh, so 30 boards from one company is quite a lot, 56 motherboards at launch in total, and not all 30 of the ASUS boards will come out at launch, but uh, so the ecosystem is much wider now than it was with first gen and second, and well, 1.5 gen, and uh, is indicative of improvement in Ryzen's market share, as we've shown in the past as well. PCIe Gen 4 and X570 weren't really discussed too much in the presentation, but we have information from the, from partners of AMD off record. And so some of that, as we've already said, AMD didn't notice, note this in the keynote, unfortunately, because it is a detailed spec, but PCIe Gen 4 lanes off the CPU will be 16 to the GPU. And then four additional PCIe Gen 4 lanes from the CPU to an M2 device. Again, that's, that's our information collected locally uh, at the show. So you'll want to check the motherboard manuals to make sure the M.2 device lines up with the CPU if you want to use the CPU lanes for it. X570 chipset is all PCIe Gen 4 lanes. The later chipsets, B550, will be, this is again our information, not official from AMD. So we've this, this may change, uh, but it's accurate at present because it comes eventually uh, from AMD. B550 should be next year, and that will have a uh, less of a focus, uh, no real focus on Gen 4 so that motherboard manufacturers can get the cost down. 3200 megahertz for dual stick memory support with the CPUs and then again, not revealed by Andy. So uh, missing information still, but 2667 megahertz for four DIMM from our sources at the show. General CPU information, AMD noted officially two times floating point capabilities, uh, two times cache size, reducing memory latency to focus on gaming performance. Then IBC in Zen 2 uh, shows some uplift beyond what AMD was expecting. So that should recap the entirety of the keynote. And again, we're, we're missing a whole lot, unfortunately, but it's not that surprising. So we'll just have to wait for June 10th for further architectural information. Beyond that, we have a lot of X570 content coming up at the show. So check back, subscribe to catch all the motherboard recaps. 
and go to store.cameronsnexus.net to support us directly. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.